movieweb.com. Behind these eyes, one finds only darkness. These are the eyes of a psychopath. <laughs> You gave a really great backstory to a character that's never had one before. When you first wrote the script, did you ever consider just making the movie about a 10-year-old? Well, at one point I had this idea that uh, was a big commitment that nobody really wanted to do, is I thought that there's really two movies I could have made. Young Michael leading up to him returning to Haddonfield in, in part one, and then pick up part two. But um, yeah, no, it wasn't really until after the fact that really I thought that you know, before you make the movie, you don't know. You know, I didn't know, would that be a compelling movie to watch Young Michael for the whole movie? But when I was done, I was like, geez, man, it was. I was totally, I found like, um, you know, Dag as Young Michael, I was totally compelling, and that easily could have been a whole movie in itself. Well, yeah, we've never seen a 10-year-old serial killer film before. Yeah, no, I would have, I, I, it was, you know what, the weird thing was, if this was 100% an, an, an original idea, and not, a, you know, Halloween, I might have done that, but since I would have thought that probably everyone in America would have been pissed if classic Michael Myers had not arrived at some point. Well, how did you decide? You know, that I would have been pissed if I went to see Batman Begins and he never put the bat suit on <laughs> for two and a half hours. Really? Wouldn't you? Actually, you wouldn't, a little jip. maybe before, <laughs> but when I was watching that movie, Christian Bale's performance in that movie, just as Bruce Wayne, I thought was compelling That's enough true that too. I wouldn't have you wanted know, so to see the I Batman. guess if you knew going in, you'd be fine with it. From what I've heard, you weren't allowed to read um, any of the script except your own character. Yeah, so. I only read my part, and then my mom read it, and then she said, you're not going to read that. <laughs> well, <laughs> now that the film is... Oh, go ahead. So you didn't read my part? No, I didn't. You didn't? No. Wow, that's probably a good thing. You got a smart mom. What was I going to say? Have you had a chance <laughs> since the film is finished to go and watch the movie, or are you being keep, nope. kept away from that, too? I am going to be kept away even for the premiere. I'm going to watch maybe the first 10 or 15 minutes where I, where there's no killing, it's just like, it's still kind of horror, but no killing, and then go out and do something else, I don't know. yeah. Well, you get to beat so, up one of the spy kids, right? Yeah. Was but, that exciting? My first kill. Was that exciting for you? It, it was, that? it was kind of <laughs> cool, because I had this big plastic stick thing. Okay, so did you guys come together before the start of the movie and try to work out, like, your movements? No, not really, I mean, we, I we, mean, we met. We met each other, you know, and yeah. I watched. Uh, I made sure I went and saw some of Dag's scenes and watched what he was doing, and, and uh, took on some of his movements. Did you have to learn how to avoid a concussion while making this film? <laughs> I definitely had a lot of stunts in this film, eh? But, I mean, it is great working with Tyler and being chased by this big man. <laughs> it was scary. <laughs> but I had, like, a sprained ankle and a lot of bruises. That's about it. You got a sprained ankle out yeah. of filming this? but that was just me running down the stairs, running after Tyler. So, yeah, I got a sprained ankle, <laughs> but that's about it. <laughs> Did you stick around him, or did you kind of try to stay away from him? Yeah, me and Tyler, we, we actually, we watched Clockwork Orange in his trailer one night when we had like two hours while they were filming Malcolm McDowell scenes, mm -hmm. and we would play football, and we would talk about his kids, and i talk about my, my home life and stuff, and he was kind of like my big brother on set. So you were never physically scared of his presence in those I scenes, was. or did you? <laughs> I'm actually just seeing him in the mask and the tall guy holding a knife. It's kind of intimidating sometimes. It got to me a few times. Let me introduce myself. I'm Joe Grizzly. I'm going to cut that mask right off your face. Can you describe your relationship with the young Mike Myers, how you feel that relationship? Well, I think the relationship between Deborah Myers and Michael Myers um, is really the only true, you know, um, relationship of love that Michael ever feels. You know, I think 
and and that with his baby sister Lori as well. I think the innocence. I think he, um, you know, his mom is his mom, and she loves him, and she's the only one that shows him love. And you know, there was a real. We had a. I I tried to establish a real bond with Dag, so we could you know work better as the characters as well. And he was just a sweetheart to work with. When you first read the script for this, did you find any aspects of it intimidating to you? Yes, I was terrified of the stripper scene. <laughs> um, that worried me, um, as I think it would worry any other actress. It, you just feel very vulnerable up, up there like that. Um, but that was the terrifying part for me. <laughs> I know there's so many other things to be grossed out or scared about in the movie, but that, for me, was the terrifying. <laughs> was that the boogeyman? As a matter of fact, I do believe it was. Jesus Christ! Michael! 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 Stop! Michael, stop! So, how much fun did you actually have making this movie? Which one? Halloween. Oh, oh, Halloween. Um, <laughs> I don't okay. know which other ones are you in. I've done so. Um, <laughs> Halloween, no, of course, it was, it was fun. It was fun. Um, it was fun because of the people. You know, it's, it's um, because of Rob and Sherry and all these guys. And, and even the kids, you know, they were great. The kids in this movie, it's wonderful actors. I mean, I'm really uh, amazed at how good. Little Scout, she's a wonder. Danielle, they're all fantastic, these kids. And we had a great, and I enjoyed very much working with Brad, too. But who, you were Sheriff. friends with Donald Pleasance. Well, I knew him. I knew him. I wasn't friends with him. Oh, okay. I met him a few times at the Royal Court Theatre in London. So you never got a chance to talk to him while he was in the production in any of these houses? Yes, I said to him once, I said, listen, you're playing this character, Loomis. I said, one day, you know, I may get to play that character. Got any tips? You're lying. That's right, <laughs> I'm lying. Good actor, though. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was joking. Um, so, anyways, uh, what did you try to do to keep this character fresh and new? I know that's probably an old question, too. Um, well, uh, you know, I have, I have had that question before, but, but it's interesting in that, um, you know, I didn't actually see any of the uh, movies, the Halloween movies, so it was much easier for me to, to keep it sort of my own Loomis and, and not copy somebody else. It's a very different, I, I, I'm sure, characterization than what um, Don Pleasance did, you know, and he was a great actor in his own right, so he had his thing and, and I have mine. Now, you worked with both Michaels. Which one was more challenging for you, the younger Michael or the older Michael? Oh, they're both. As far in character, they're both. Uh, they're both wonderful and both very, very different. I just want to know what the young Michael ate at that sanatorium to get to be seven foot tall. Because whatever his diet was, I would like to get on it. Because it was amazing that this young kid who was this big, uh, 17 years later, is now you know could play basketball for any team in America. These eyes will deceive you. They will destroy you. They will take from you your innocence, your pride, and eventually your soul. Behind these eyes one finds only blackness. These are the eyes of a cycle. Almost your whole performance is comes through the eyes. Does that ever get difficult sometimes to just do a character purely through your eyes? Oh, totally. I mean, it was uh, it's a very big challenge just to do physicality through, you know, using your body uh, and just your eyes. It, I didn't even have facial movements that I could, you know, express myself. It was just the eyes and the body movements. So it took a little little time to figure all that out. What is that like when you have to act against somebody when you're just acting against their eyes and their presence and there's no real dialogue between you two? You know, you definitely go to a place that you don't want to be at. Sometimes I, I found it a little hard to pull back. That's why Rob would say, okay, let's do another take. You got this, let's do it more. But you know, working with Tyler and all done up and just saying his eyes, I mean, it's scary. Even offset, it's scary seeing him. 
but he takes that mask right off after every scene. <laughs> <laughs> how hard was it to even out the two sides of this movie as far as when you're in the editing bay, how much time you actually give to the beginning till you get to the end? Well, I tried to break it down in my mind, and I don't know if it exactly comes out this way, but I thought, you know, probably act one, about a half an hour of young Michael, act two, about a half an hour-ish of, uh, you know, Smith's Grove Sanitarium with young Michael turning into adult Michael, and then the last third of the film would be Haddonfield. It was sort of how I conceived it in my mind as I was, you know, writing the script. I know that they have the original John Carpenter Halloween theme, yeah. and you kind of use that early on, but then you kind of have your own theme of just noise. Yeah. Now, was that a conscious thing to just kind of make the soundtrack with a lot of noise, and how did you come about doing that part of it? Um, well, I didn't do the music, um, but the theme, you know, it's, it was tough because the movie had, you know, we wanted it to be more like, at times of the violence, that rather than having music trying to drive it, it was more like soundscapes of Michael's mind. That's why a lot of times we, I would strip out the natural sounds in the room and you just hear these weird sounds as if you're in Michael's head, like the ringing in his head. And then at certain points when I wanted, you know, we drop in, you know, here and there, the, the original Carpenter cues, I think there's like three major ones that we used. Would you come back for a sequel? Um, it's possible if they, you know, they up the ante. So do you think you would be back for a sequel if they offered that? You know, I would hope so. And there's definitely the ending. There's a lot more you can do with Laurie Strode make you a little bit more insane or crazy. Halloween.